Oak Hill this year. I know we got some, we got some new teachers. Okay, raise your hand if you're a new student. Okay. Well, you haven't seen me yet, and my name's Mr. Becca. And most of you have probably seen me around this building, either volunteering or maybe I've been in your classroom subbing. And you've probably seen me with kid or with kids around my neck and kids around my legs everywhere. Um, but today, I'm not going to be your teacher. I'm not your teacher. I'm just going to be myself. So you're going to get to know Miss Rebecca before she became Miss Rebecca because she wasn't always like that. So you're going to get to know Miss Rebecca as the little kid, just like you. And you're going to see past this. Does that sound good? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so for starters, I used to walk in the same hallways just like you. I went to school here. I played in the gym, just like you. I was here when the playground that you played on was built. I wasn't always able to play on the playground. I saw the track being built. I saw playgrounds being built. And I even saw the kindergarten wing be added on to the school. So I've watched this building come a long way. And I've seen a lot of kids come in and out of here. So I went to school here, just like you. I wasn't always a teacher. I wasn't always a volunteer. I sat in the same desk that you did, and I learned from my teachers just like you did every day. So what makes me different now than back then? Well, I didn't used to talk, and I didn't always look like this. Mr. Becca used to wear <coughs> braces on her legs, and she used to walk totally different than the way you see her today. The six-year-old or the five-year-old Rebecca never said a word. And she used to walk with her feet like this. And actually, back then, it was worse. I can't do it all the way now because it's not natural to me anymore to stand like this. And then I used to walk on my toes. So both my feet used to be like this. And I used to wear braces on my legs. You might be asking yourself why that happened and why I had this. And at that time, I really didn't understand. And later on, I found out I had something called cerebral palsy. Cerebral palsy is a big word, isn't it? Yes. yes. But it's not a scary word. It's just something that makes me different from everyone else. Cerebral palsy is not just a physical condition. It also affects your brain. So the way you process things and the way I process things are totally different. And honestly, I shouldn't be doing what I'm doing right now. Most kids you see with cerebral palsy are on wheelchairs. And depending on how severe it is, some of them know what today is and some of them don't. But they always smile and they know when you're acknowledging them and when you're not. This is very rare for me to be standing up here. But how did I get here and why am I standing here? I had five surgeries and I had three physical therapists and two occupational therapists. And I just had my last surgery by the time I was 18. So by the time I was six years old, I had already had at least two surgeries, and I had over 20 doctors over my one life. Imagine if you went to the doctor at least two or three times a week. You'd probably get really bored sitting in the office. And doctors told me that I would never run or be able to play any sports. And today, <coughs> that's not the case. Am I in the wheelchair today? No. no. Nope. I have learned how to walk three times, and I have worked my way out of a wheelchair twice. So don't take it for granted that I am standing up here with you today. And you'll find out some more as we talk today, but there's something I want to cover that's very special and important, and I promise you won't forget it. Even though I had all this stuff going on on the outside of my body, there is a whole lot more going on on the inside. Because cerebral palsy isn't one of those things that you can always see on the outside. For me, all the muscles in my body work like this rubber band. You see how tight this rubber band is? Yes. Okay. So when I was little, just like you, the reason why my feet were this way is because all my muscles in my legs were pulling my feet up. And I was four years old when they cut all the muscles and nerves to my legs. And I had to relearn how to do everything over. 
So when they cut my nerves and my leg and my muscles and nerves in my legs, my muscles went from being as tight as this rubber band to just wouldn't be like this. Can you walk if your muscles are like this? No. No. You wouldn't be able to stand up. So I went from being able to walk a little bit with my feet crooked and messed up to being able to do absolutely nothing. So even though you can see how it affects my appearance, there are some things that you can't see. For me and the mental side of cerebral palsy, for some things, I can make it work. Other things, not so much. I can either do one thing or I can do another thing. I can't do both at the same time. I like to be read to because I can actually comprehend what I'm reading. If I read the book, I can either read you the book and read the words on the page as fast as I can process them, or I can have somebody read it to me and understand everything you just said. I can do both at the same time. I can either do this side or I can do this side. I can't do both at the same time. If I do jumping jacks, my jumping jacks actually come out backwards. I don't understand how that works because that shouldn't be possible. But for me, that's how that goes and that's not rare for me. It's always different. So my jumping jacks come out backwards and if you put me on roller skates, well, I might as well just be doing the world's largest split because I can't control which way my legs go and my muscles aren't strong enough to hold me up. So I'm not the best partner to go skating with, but I'll be out there trying it with you anyway. So that's a little bit of how cerebral palsy affects me now. And now you're going to see how it really bothers me on the inside. Even though I walk the same hallways as you, and I smiled anyway, there were days I didn't smile at all. Why? Because I had kids that pushed me into walls every day because I looked different from them. They looked at me and they teased me. Is that very good? No. Should we do that to someone? No. No. But I see it anyway. And that bothers me. Because you guys don't understand what that can do on the inside of a person's soul. So what happens is if I go to school and I hear this, you're fat. You can't walk. Why do you walk like that? Why does it take you so long to do your work? If I hear that at the age of six, if I hear it enough, I'm going to start to believe it. I believe that I was a failure because somebody told me that I was. I believe that I was going to become nothing because somebody told me that I was going to be nothing. I wasn't told that I was beautiful until I was 12 years old and it was by the time I was homeschooled so it wasn't from a student and it was some from somebody that I least expected. I would walk down the hallway and by the time if I put my hand out in front of you, you wouldn't even take my hand and help me walk down the hallway. If I fell in the hallway, you would just walk by me and ignore me like I wasn't even there. And it was just because I looked different from everyone else. Why does it matter that I look different from everyone else? It doesn't make me any less of a human being. So if I'm walking down the hallway, and I'm fixing to give you a really deep picture of what this looked like. So I need y'all to be big first graders. And sit up nice and straight and take a deep breath. Because here we go. If I'm walking down the hallway as a six-year-old, this is what I saw. I don't like your shoes. I don't like your shirt. Oh, and your hair looks funny, so I don't like that either. You might walk a little bit differently, so I'm not going to be friends with you. I'm not going to take time to get to know you. And just because you have blue eyes, I'm not going to get to know you. That's exactly what happened. Did I ask you what your name was? No. Did I take the time to get to know you first? No. No. All I did was judge what I saw on the outside. Nobody knew what was going on in here. Nobody knew that I went home looking in the mirror wondering if I was good enough or not. And I would try as hard as I could to make it stop, but it never did. I cut my hair so that somebody wouldn't notice. I even tried wearing the same shoes as my friends, and they still noticed. 
I tried wearing a different type of clothing and they still noticed. And every time I tried, something else would come along and that didn't even matter anymore, so what's the point? And then my grades would come in. And I would get grades like 60s, 70s. Every now and then I'd get a B. And if I got an A, man, we're having a party because that never happened. <laughs> That hardly ever happened. I didn't get my first 100 on a math test until I was in the ninth grade, and I cried in the middle of class. That's how important that was. And I'm not just talking to you. I'm talking to teachers, too, because there are some teachers that I've met that just need to retire. And I'm not talking about here. I'm thankful for being here. I'm thankful for the teachers that I've had because the ones that I've had here are the ones that have helped me make me me. So if you're a teacher sitting in this room today, you have a chance to change a life and you don't know who might be up here 10 years later talking about you. I don't want you to be one of those teachers that I wish would just retire and look at me and mark my paper wrong before they even read my material. My teachers changed my life, and like I said, 90% of them came out of here. When I was in first grade, I had a teacher who helped me put my braces on every day, because sometimes I would come to school with them on backwards. And if I fell in the hallway or outside, it wasn't uncommon for me to have band-aids all over my body. If I fall down, it's just like, oh, it's built for tough. It doesn't even hurt anymore. Like, I can fall down just like this. Like, I can't do it in these white pants, but if I, if I, if I fell down just like this, and the teacher that I had would take me by the hand, and she would pull me up, and she'd help me get up just like this, and then she would take me back and help me find some Band-Aids, because if I had a river of blood, then I would take a Band-Aid. If it's just a speck, yeah, I don't need a Band-Aid. Y'all make me laugh sometimes because y'all have little, little, <laughs> mini blood bite wounds on your arms. You're like, Mr. Becca, Mr. Becca, I need a Band-Aid. I'm like, there's no blood. There's no blood. You don't need a Band-Aid. Why do need a Band-Aid? Do I need to call the ambulance? <laughs> but when you really fall, yes. this honey jiggy, if you really fall down and there's nobody to help you up, it makes it harder. And all I wanted was somebody to come and help me get back up. And I want you guys to understand something. I'm not just here because I'm your substitute teacher. I'm here because I want you to know that I'm always here to help you get back up. But I also need you to understand that the words that you say and what you do <coughs> matters. Let's pretend that the bottle of bubbles doesn't exist. In other words, if I blow these bubbles out, can I put them back in? No. Once I blow them out, no. I can't put them back in. So watch this. Whoa. The words that you say and the things that you do work like those bubbles. Whoa. Once you do them and once you say them, you can't put it back in. Once they're out there, they're out there. And you don't know if they're hurting somebody or not. You can either kill somebody or lift somebody up by what you say. It might be easy to bully someone, but the effects on it last forever. Are these scary? No. No. What are those? They just made me walk better. These are my first pair of braces, and I wore these by the time I was three years old. And I would get on the bus, sat on the bus, and by the time I was in pre-K, 
So my wisdom my ice cream money just because I was different. These aren't scary. And being different isn't scary. You guys spend so much time trying to look like somebody else. I don't want you to look like somebody else. I want you to look like you and be who you are. Because nobody can change who you are. And it's okay to be different. To try to look and like, try to make yourself look like somebody else, first of all, it costs too much. It costs a lot. And I know that because I tried that. But what you say and what you do matters to people. And let's just say this. It should be impossible for me to stand up here, but it's not. If you put me on a stool or a counter or something, my legs are just going to hang there because they cut everything. I have no reflexes in my legs. And doctors told me that I couldn't play sports or do anything with my life. And today I have a black belt in karate, and I played soccer, and I've done all kinds of things <coughs> with the one thing that is supposed to be different from me. So I'm doing the impossible. But it was because somebody took the time to take my hand and pull me back up. And when I fell, they kept pushing me anyway. It should be impossible to stand up. If I stay down, can I go anywhere? No. I can't get anywhere. If I stay down here, flat on my face, can I go anywhere? No. no. I can move my feet, but I can't go anywhere because I'm not on, on the floor. So when I get back up, it should be impossible, right? Yeah. But it's not. Only when you stay down, you can't go anywhere. You go and you get back up like this, and you can still keep going. Only when you choose not to get back up is when you fail. And a few years ago, I could do it this on this side. I can't do it on the side. A few years ago, I couldn't get up just like I'm about to show you. I couldn't get up like this. I had to use my arms. I almost fell, but remember, I was built for a tub, so it doesn't matter. If I fall, it's okay, I'll just try again. So here's what I want you guys to do. When you walk down that hallway, and you see somebody down, you can pick them up just like this. I like your shirt. I like your jacket. I like your shoes. Oh, that's pretty awesome to be for Jess. I like your hair. You look really cute today. Uh, I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure. 
but I'm thankful to be standing here and to be standing in the same building that I sat in 11 years ago, waiting on somebody to come in and talk about bullying. They never came, so I never thought that 11 years from now I would be standing here. I didn't plan this out. I don't rehearse these things, but I saw the need and I took advantage of it because I knew I could change something. So if you bought a yellow folder, oh, over here. Okay, I need you guys to listen here. And I'm gonna sit down here because I want you guys to be as close to me as you can get, okay? That doesn't mean move. No. Stay on your side. Right Thank you. If you're sitting right here, you can turn around. Okay. Each of your teachers have one of these. They have a yellow board. Last year, when I did bullying one on one for third grade, I started with them because I saw it there first. They wrote an entire booklet of letters. I didn't ask them to. I didn't expect them to. They just did it. And all those letters contain numerous <laughs> things that I never expected. But they told me how much they needed bullying one-on-one -on -one and how much they appreciated me coming in. And then some of them just wrote what they really, really needed to get out. Yeah. Do any of you guys have something that you really, really need to get out and you just don't know who to talk to? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got some of that for you. So if you want to write me a letter, you can do it. If you want to just vent and write your heart away, you can do it. I'm not, nobody else is going to see them but me. You don't even have to put your name on the paper if you want to be anonymous, okay? If you don't want nobody to know who you are, you don't have to write your name on the paper. The only thing I ask is you put your teacher name on the bottom of the paper so I at least know what class you're coming out of. And the other thing is, I only have one rule. You cannot talk about another classmate in your letter. And I'm starting a gossip session. Okay? So if you want to write a letter, and you want to pour your heart out, then you go ahead and do it. Because I have a whole notebook, and every time I read them, it reminds me why I'm still here. And you guys don't know this, but you guys are changing my history. All summer long, people were asking, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? I had one mission trip, came home, drove myself crazy. Why? Because I missed the kids. Half of you guys live in my subdivision. You haven't found my house yet. But if you ever find my house, you're always welcome. So I always think about you guys. And if you think somebody's not thinking about you, then come ask me because I'll give you a whole other opinion. Because I'm always thinking about you, and if I didn't care about you or didn't love you, then I wouldn't be up here pouring out my life and writing letters and doing bullying one on one. I care about how you guys treat each other, and that's why I love you. And I want you guys to see another side of me and not just Miss Rebecca, okay? So, if you want to write something, put it in the folder and I'll take it home tomorrow. I don't need these folders back until tomorrow. Um, I'm going to take them home over the weekend so I can do them. So, did you guys enjoy today? Yes! yes. What are you going to do now? Okay, by a show of hands, don't want to scream out because I can't get it all at one time and it's really jumbly if y'all start yelling. Okay? If you have a question, raise your hand. Yes, saw your hand first. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me a story. I just need a question. Okay? Yes, Jack. That was the straightest speech I've ever heard. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> if it doesn't matter to you what I look like right now, then it shouldn't matter to someone else. Okay? I'm different, and so is everybody else in here. So just because you're not going to pick on me doesn't mean you should pick on somebody else. Yes. That is my Bible. It goes with me everywhere. Yes. Why do you go? Why do the moon is red? 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 Why do the
today. I don't know about the moon, okay? I haven't been on it yet. <laughs> I don't know about the moon, okay? Do you have another question for me? No? Okay. Yes? No. Yes? Let's picture everyone there. Did you not see it? Okay, I'll show it to you in a second. Yes? What? When was I in a wheelchair? I was in a wheelchair when I was four years old. And then I got out of the wheelchair. And then when I was in fourth grade, I had to go back into a wheelchair because I had a surgery. And they had to fix my foot. And I couldn't walk. And then I had to learn how to walk again. And then, yeah, it's a whole other thing. But, but I worked my way out of that one too. Yes, <laughs> I had to wear braces because they help me walk better. They help me keep my feet straight and they support my foot. You know how your foot kind of has an arch in it like this? Yeah. A little bit, and you put your foot on the ground and it kind of arches a little bit? Okay, I didn't have that. They had to build me one. And that's why I had so many surgeries. But they had to build me one, but until then I had to wear braces because I didn't have an arch in my foot. So they just had to help me walk better and keep my feet more on the ground than did by them or without the braces on. But, does that make sense? Okay. Any more questions? Oh, yes. Okay, say that one more time. Either one. You can write whatever you want. If you don't want to write anything, you don't have to. I'm just giving people the opportunity if they want one. Yes. Why do you wear that on your neck? It's my necklace. See? Right here. No, no, that. This? Oh, so people can hear me. It's a microphone. Ah. <laughs> 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 Any more questions? <laughs> You guys need to tell me one way, if you have one way, how you're going to stop bullying in your school. No. Yes. 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 I know you got something. I know you do much for that. Okay. Okay. I know you're the book, Brooklyn or Claire, but I don't know which one. Okay. Hi, Brooklyn. <laughs> Hi, Dylan. You okay? I know I probably like. I know you're like. I know, I've seen some, I've seen some bullies and people. Are you going to stop now? Okay. You got a question for me? You want to come give me a hug? You want to come give me a hug? Uh, this one right here. I've seen some bully quite a few people. And I think he's going to stop now. Right? You know I still love you, right? Okay, we're gonna stay on green today? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Very nice. What else? Hi. Hey, Heidi. I'm gonna make her face turn red. I used to keep her in nursery, and now she's in first grade. She's freaking out a little bit. You don't have a question? Okay. Um, I know there's some teachers in here. Do y'all have questions for me? They can be hard ones or really goofy ones. <laughs> Do y'all have questions for me? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. Yes, Jackson. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Okay. I'm getting some of the same people. 
Yes. I like that. She just said, don't bully. She didn't say, don't say that word. She said, just don't bully. I'll take that. That's all. Yes. You got what? Shh. You know what? My arm got broken, too. Here. I was in third grade. Yes. What happened? My friend. All right, so if I don't have any more questions, I'm seeing some of the same people. If you haven't asked a question and you want to, now's the time. Yes, Joshua. Um,